when I heard you were getting into uh, law enforcement, I thought, man, he, I feel like to be a cop, you need to be very good with confrontation. Mm-hmm. And like, I could never do it. Like, I'm not a yeah. confrontational guy. No, I'm, I'm not really either. Uh, so that's why it kind of steered you to traffic more, huh? Like something absolutely. you don't have to be. Like on, when I was in patrol, it, I looked at it almost as like acting. Like you have to come out and be that guy and, and, uh, with confidence to mm-hmm. have some command presence and, uh, and own it. But, uh, I was completely out of water mm. where traffic, um, I worked at first in the central, like downtown area, the surrounding areas. And, uh, a lot of times people are they're they're happy to see you like, Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, this happened. And you, you deal with a lot of a-holes occasionally, but a lot of people with, you know, uh, unlicensed, no insurance, and hit and runs, a lot of hit and runs. Um, and yeah. uh, there, was a, there was a time, because um, through probation, I mean, I was miserable. I, I, I would, you know, uh, you get a lot of court because you're arresting people. You're always in criminal court. Um, I mean, I would go days where working all night, what they call morning watch, and getting home at, or not even getting home, getting off at 7 a.m., going to court, 8 o'clock, then you're at court till noon, then you're going back to work at, you know, 6 p.m., and doing mm. that day after day is brutal. And, no, nah, I, I, I was going downhill uh, with, uh, you know, drinking, drinking and just being miserable and not not cycling or working out or doing anything. Mm. And... Um, my wife saw it and, uh, she was really great and supported me and would be like, you know, just, you know, relax, you know, I got this. Uh, but I was at a point where, and drinking will do this. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't happy at home <coughs> and I wasn't happy at work. Mm-hmm. And then I went to work one day and, uh, I was working the day shift at the traffic division. I was kind of new there and it happens a lot where you show up and the other three guys all called in sick and you're like the only guy and you're like, what the heck? You know, it happens all the time. There's not enough of us mm-hmm. and we don't have any mandatory like staffing or anything like that. If if you call in sick, you're sick. You're mm-hmm. not replaced. And my first call, it's like seven in the morning, like three vehicle accident, multiple people in every single car. Uh, cars that need to be impounded, two drivers, no licenses. Uh, it's a lot of information to take down every party's info, uh, every passenger, where they're seated, did they have their seatbelt on, any airbags deployed, getting tow, filling out the impound reports, uh, writing tickets out for the people without licenses and insurance. And um, I got I got overwhelmed. And after that call of doing everything myself, I, I went back to the watch commander and it said, uh, I'm out of here. I'm taking off. And he's like, you know, and they never saw that side of me before. And they're like, uh, are, are you, are you sick? You know, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't, I don't feel good, man. I'm out of here. And in my mind, I, I thought I quit. I, I took off. And at that at time I was commuting on a, a street bike and uh, I, I rode home and my wife had no idea I was coming home but as I'm going down the five south the sun was still really low in the sky and as I'm I couldn't see even you know I think I took off and even with sunglasses on or whatever I had I could not see as I'm going down the freeway, just, it was really weird. And uh, I, I pretty much just lost my shit. Just completely full breakdown. And uh, I, you know, kept it on two wheels. And uh, I don't know, I was really suffering going through a dark time. Then as I continued on, just like squinting and just looking at the white lines and uh, 
for whatever reason, um, I just felt like all the darkness and doom and everything I had in me, like, pull out of me. And I, I, I get home, and I, I come in through the garage, and my wife's in the kitchen, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, what are you doing home? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I feel like I have to be home right now. And uh, I don't know if it was just I was happy to to be home or I. It just felt like some darkness got pulled out of me. Then we that night, I, I just felt I felt like I almost just lost it all. And then I was like really grateful for my my family and to, to just be there. And I think I had a couple of days off at that point now and. Um, so since, since that point, my, my attitude has been a little better, a little better. I quit drinking. Uh, and shortly after that, I got a mountain bike and my, my, my old buddy, Tom, uh, he's a doctor and sees a lot of dark things as well. We would cycle a lot and just talk about things. He's an ER doctor. Um, and our schedules would oftentimes like match up. And I was, I mean, I was pretty much 200 pounds. Uh, oh, just, really? just not doing good at yeah, all. Yeah. And my body would hurt. I would wake up and go down the steps, the stairs and take one at a time, like my ankles and knees. And uh, yeah. So everything just turned around with. Do you think that, that was point. like just the stress of probation, the stress of the academy shit you see on, on the calls, you know, like you got to be able to download that stuff to somebody or it, oh, it yeah. stacks up on you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Um, That's weird the way you said, like, it just sort of left you, you know? I f yeah, I felt it. I, it's, you know, something, uh, a little spiritual awakening feeling type thing. But uh, I've had a better better attitude, and I've been pretty pretty good, you know, the last, I don't know how many years it's been now. But, uh, um I feel like once I really started just kind of being myself too at work and going to the motorcycle at work, I think made me, once I got through that whole training stage of being on the bike, which was kind of funny, but uh, I, I, I feel like I'm more of myself and okay. that makes it better. Hey, that's a hard job, man. Like uh, I was, yeah. that my next question was like, you've had to have seen some crazy <laughs> stuff down in, in LA where you're working. I mean, I, when I work in San Bernardino city, it's, it's like a miniature version of LA, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it's terrible. And, uh, the stuff I see there, I come home and I mean, I, I just, I download it, whether it's my father-in-law or another coworker who's worked in the fire service, like somebody that understands yeah. and can relate and has seen stuff like that. But it's like, I got to get it out or, I mean, it starts to just like, um, yeah, I start to feel like this pressure inside me. You know what I mean? Like I have to be able to vent it out. And riding is a big thing for me. I still, that's, that's like therapy been, for me. That's been huge. And I, I love golf, but sometimes you finish golfing and you feel worse than when you showed up. So <laughs> I always do. <laughs> but I'm so shooting 110. My, so. <laughs> my, my best day would be golf in the morning and then mountain bike in the afternoon. And then you're like, ah, I feel good. Yeah, yeah. So, but I... My wife is great. She'll sometimes she'll say, you know, hey, how was today? And sometimes I'm like, I, I don't want to talk about it. Mm. Okay. Um, there are times I I feel like telling her, and but um, so she's pretty good at reading me. And but I have to. What I realize now, I have to get out and ride my my e bike, or you know, spend a you know, a few hours at the golf course and I, I'll just trip out like the morning dew on the grass and the fog lifting and like, you know, just appreciating those moments yeah. and feeling that that's, um, I have to. And, and even my, my wife is like, she realized how, how good it is for me to do those kind of things and how necessary because I went a couple of years without doing anything and I went downhill. Yeah. It happens fast. Yeah. Oh, that's nuts, nuts.
Thanks for watching the Whiskey Throttle Show. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell to get alerts for all the latest content. Follow us on Twitter at W underscore throttle underscore show and on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram at Whiskey Throttle Show. The Whiskey Throttle Show, now available on the Spot Network, an independent standalone streaming platform live now on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Google Play, Android TV, most smart TVs, and all phones and tablets. Look for future live shows and specials only available on Spot Network. Download the app today on your favorite device.